Hey everyone, so um, I'm doing a little bike maintenance today and I'm actually rebuilding both my fork and my shock, which I just removed actually. Here's the old guy, it goes right in here. Um, and I'm actually replacing my rear shock and rebuilding this fork. So I thought it might be interesting to show you guys how a bike shock works. Um, and what's interesting is pretty much all uh, the shocks, whether it's in a car, motorcycle, whatever, um, are all going to work the same way and with the same concepts. They might have slightly different construction, might be a little bit stronger, uh, but they're all going to work the same way. So before I go ahead and put the new shock in, I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you a little bit of um, how the mechanism works on the actual bike before I get into how the inside of the shock works. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward system. On the rear shock, it's going to end up being between these two points here, which you'll see once I put it on. So I'll show you a little bit here closer on this pivot. Uh, there's two different pivot points like I stated before, right here and right here. And then down here are where the crank attaches, which is also on the other side. You can see over here, um, that's where the chain and the spokes and everything are going to attach. So <clears throat> what's going to happen is you can have bikes, some will have single pivot points, uh, which is very basic. So it basically just going to rotate along that pivot point and it's going to compress this. This particular bike is a tool, dual pivot point. And what that's going to do is allow the um, bike frame to sort of act differently than if it was a single pivot point. For example, one of the pivots here has an attachment to the bottom bracket which allows this bottom bracket to move less when this is compressing. That causes uh, a few things to happen here. One is you're gonna get less chain movement, less chain stretch as a result of um, compressing that. And the other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have sort of less of, a, it's called a sort of a pedal kickback. Uh, so when you compress it, usually what you would see, because of the way the chain is, um, is attached, you're going to see that as you compress it, the pedal would probably kick back a little bit like this every time you compress. Um, on this one, it's actually a very minimal. It's a cool design the way they did it. Uh, each manufacturer is going to have their own design on pivots. Some will have single pivot bikes and dual pivots. Uh, some will have what they call a virtual pivot point. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that, but you can see the effect of it here. Um, this is where the main part of this rear triangle is going to pivot. And this is where the bottom bracket is attached. So you can see here, if you take a look, when I compress this guy like that, you can actually see these pedals are moving independently of the rest of the bike. And what that allows it to do is um, two things. One is for the, uh, like I said, you're gonna have less pedal movement, which is an advantage that you'd like to have. The second thing, which is a really neat feature, is when you're pedaling uphill, you wanna minimize the amount of movement that you're putting into the pedals that compresses the shock. If you're pedaling really hard, working, putting a lot of energy uphill, if you're wasting energy as compressing that shock, you're really not being efficient. And what they're trying to do to combat this is allow this to be independent of the shock so that when I'm pushing down on the pedals, it's not going to move the shock as much as if, say, something hits the real wheel and it actually wants it to compress it like such. Uh, so you can see a little bit of the effect on how that's going to work. It's really, really neat uh, on this design. Uh, like I said, each manufacturer should be a little different. So that was a very brief explanation there. I can get into a lot of the different mechanics, but I'm not going to because honestly, I don't know it as well as I probably could. Uh, and it's probably not too exciting for a lot of you. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the a new shock on here. Uh, then I will take apart the fork. We'll look at the insides of how that fork works. And then uh, I'll go ahead and briefly show you the difference between a fork and an air shock uh, and, and go from there. So let's get started. So let me show you what I got here. Uh, this is what the insides are. Uh, here are the lowers. Um, it's the bottom part, the part you see on the outside. Uh, the wheel attaches here to give you an idea. Um, and this is where the brake attaches. Uh, this is the disc brake on this bike. Uh, so part of the lowers, uh, you can look inside there, you probably can't see very well, but on the outside here are the uh, dust seals. And the, the point of these is, is what it sounds like, it's to keep dirt and dust out of the inside. You don't want to get uh, anything in there because it, it'll scratch um, the sanctions and, uh, and it'll just sort of get into the seals, wear out the O-rings, and uh, you don't want that. So uh, 
that's what we're looking at here. It's pretty simple. It's actually surprisingly light. Um, not surprising me there. I think it's all aluminum. So. Um, so, there's the two sides. There's the rebound side, which is over here, and then there's the spring side, which is over here. So let's take a look quickly at the spring. So uh, here's the spring assembly, and the spring goes on this side here. Um, and when it's at the side, it's, a, it's about like that, right? Um, around the spring on the inside of the sanction is uh, just this thing right here. Uh, it's just, I think it's just a, a sleeve of some sort of plastic sleeve. It's just to reduce friction uh, so you don't scratch up the inside, you don't get metal shards of metal on metal contact. So it's just to, to help avoid that, give it longevity, so to speak, uh, because the grease uh, that's on the spring might not do the job on its own. So let's look a little closer at the spring here. At the very bottom of the spring you have this, and this is uh, basically the opposite spring. So the one spring is for compression. Uh, this one is for when this spring comes back from compression, uh, you don't want the spring to just knock really hard at the bottom here. So what this does, it just gives it a little dampening. It compresses it a little bit. So uh, let's say you hit a really big jump, it compresses, and then when it pops back up, you don't want to knock and have the rock pop back up. So what you're going to do is just pop back up, and it's sort of going to ease it at the end of that travel there. So that's the one thing there. Uh, and like I said before, this is a U-turn fork. Let's see if I can talk today. Uh, and I'll show you how that works here. So uh, this is the part that seals off the entire uh, fork. It goes right into there. And on top is this. And this is what I spin to adjust the U-turn. Um, and what that does is it spins this little metal piece inside. And this metal piece lets the spring spin independently of uh, the outside. So uh, what that means is if I screw this in, on this end they have, and I thought it was kind of cool how they did this, but on this end they basically allow this piece to turn, which will shorten it up. Um, and uh, the reason they would want to adjust the travel is a whole different terrain, you have different kinds of travel. Uh, and uh, the way I use it, and I think the way most people end up using it, is I shorten up my travel for when I'm going uphill. So I'm not wasting energy on the shock, right? Because every time the shot compresses, uh, that could be energy I could be putting directly into my pedal stroke. So, uh, I shorten it up. But then when I go downhill, I obviously want the shock to do its business. I want to have a lot of travel. Let's say if I hit a jump or something like that, um, I'll screw it out. Let's say when I get to the top of the hill, and then I'll have the full length of the entire travel of this fork to go ahead and compress. Um, so that's kind of how that works. And it really, this part just stays still, and you screw it in, and it shortens up the travel right there. Boom. Um, so that's how that goes. So on this side, uh, which would be over here, you have then the rebound damper. And this is the most important part of the fork and what really distinguishes a nicer fork from a very cheap one you might get on a, a $300 bike or $200 bike, so to speak. Uh, uh, and, and, and they do have dampers on the, uh, the cheaper ones. Uh, they're not very good. Um, and to be honest, uh, this fork is a 2009 fork. To be honest, it is not the best damper uh, you can get at all. There's a, a lot of uh, technology now that's a lot different. Um, this was a mid-range fork back in uh, back in 2009, and uh, how it works is there's an oil bath in here. So this entire sanction is filled with oil, uh, and this is riding up inside there, up and down when the fork goes. So like the spring keeps the fork from compressing. The fork compresses with the spring, and the spring pushes it back out. But if you had nothing but the spring, it'd be a very bouncy ride, right? You might know when your car shocks are going bad, the ride starts getting very bouncy and it doesn't actually dampen um, anything. The problem with the bike is, let's say you hit a big jump or, or you hit a big bump, it's going to throw you off if you have no rebound. So what this does is it takes the oil and it forces the oil to go through a smaller opening than the size of the tube. So that's slowing down the flow of the oil from above and below the dampers where the oil is. So. Maybe I can give you a better idea. Um, when you compress it, you don't want to have a dampening as much as if you're uh, going back up. Uh, because you already have some dampening happening from the spring when you're compressing. So what happens is you can see there's some holes, some big holes in here, and there's a metal plate. And on the other side, you can sort of see there's a uh, spring right here. And that metal plate will basically, when it's being compressed, that metal plate will open up and let oil flow a lot easier through it. However, and this is basically the concept is one way out. When you go backwards, it's going to not be able to go through these big holes. And the only way it'll be, go, be able to go through is this smaller one here. And there's some really small holes. I don't know if you can see them. Some really small holes right there where it would go through. 
Inside these small holes, you can see a little cone shape. Uh, it might be hard to see. But how this works is when I spin this red dial, this cone moves up and down, which blocks more or less of the holes from being accessible. So by spinning this dial on the outside of the fork, I can control how quickly this fork is allowed to rebound. Uh, so that means I have an adjustable damper. Some of the cheaper shocks, uh, most of the cheaper shocks, I should say, do not have an adjustable rebound. Um, and the really nice shocks have a lot more complicated dampers than this. So for example, all I can do is control one setting for the rebound and then the compression goes on its own way. Uh, the newer ones, you can control the compression and the rebound. And the really nice ones, you can control what's called high speed compression and low speed compression. So that means if you're hitting really small bumps, you want that fork to sort of really quickly um, be able to go up and down. But if you hit a bigger jump, like a big and you compress a lot and it's a lot slower of a compression but a lot longer of one, you do not want it to bounce up really quickly because that would give you a, basically a poor ride. So what a really new one, a nice one will do, will have multiple pathways. This one just has the one pathway down and the one pathway up. The newer ones will have multiple pathways, anywhere from two or more pathways that can go down and up. And it will depend on how much oil is flowing, how quickly on which pathway it goes through. And using different um, uh, technologies that uh, a lot of the companies have been implementing into their rebound control, you'll be able to control if it's a big bump, you can go slower, and if it's a small bump, you can go a lot faster. That gives you a lot better compliance, the tire stays on the ground longer, it gives you better grip, and it gives you a smoother ride overall. Uh, so more control, smoother ride, um, just a way better situation. Um, so I am a uh, grad student, so I cannot afford a really nice fork. Um, this one is a, a mid-range fork. I think when it was new, it went for about $550. Uh, the nicer bike forks easily push fifteen uh, to seventeen hundred dollars uh, just for the stock fork, and then people customize them in whatever ways they want. Um, so that is a brief explanation of how this particular fork works, and just a, a sort of an overview on how all forks and uh, shocks in general actually work. Uh, I'll be able to show you in a moment here a, uh, a rear shock um, and how that works. Now this one's coil. They have a lot of forks these days um, that are air. So instead of having this uh, spring here, they have an air chamber with, and it's similar to this, except instead of this being designed for oil, it's designed for air. And it would basically have a, the air pressure increase as you go up. Um, and you actually have, in some of the newer ones, they haven't designed, so there's a negative chamber here. So the positive pressure increases here, at the same time the negative pressure increases here. So they sort of work together. Um, and that's where you get your spring. So that's called an air spring. This one's a coil spring uh, because, well, I have a coil. So uh, the air springs, they have a different feel to them. Uh, some people prefer air springs, some people prefer coil springs. Um, it's, it's all different. The nice thing about coil is you're going to have the same amount of force it takes to compress it no matter where along that compression you are. But the air spring, as you compress it more, it takes more force to compress it. So the fork doesn't feel quite as even all the way through its stroke, but uh, you're less likely, if you have it set correctly, you're less likely to bottom out that fork because that really increases that pressure. Um, there's a lot of other reasons for air forks. I'm not gonna get too much into it, and I'm far from an expert, so I don't want to uh, misspeak. <laughs> if I already said something wrong, feel free to correct me. I can uh, amend it, and, and uh, I'll do what I can. All right, so now that we took apart a fork, you should have a pretty good idea of how a shock is gonna work in general. You understand compression, rebound, and all that. So I'll show you a little bit on the rear shock here, what's different between this and the other one, uh, and why exactly I would have this piggyback reservoir. So, uh, taking a look at this guy here, this is gonna be an air shock, uh, as opposed to the fork, which was a coil-based one. Now you can find rear shocks that have coils, and you can find uh, forks that have air, so they're interchangeable. I explained to you a little bit on why you would choose one over the other. It more has to do with the feeling of it, uh, and whether or not you're gonna have bottom-out uh, issues or not, uh, but I won't go too much more into that. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly take off this. It's called the air sleeve, so you can see what it looks like at least partially on the inside.
All right. So I went ahead and took off uh, the air sleeve so you can see what's underneath it. Uh, and it's very basic. Uh, so on this one side, you're gonna have a seal. The outside seals to protect from dust. The inside ones are to keep the air pressure in. Uh, it's very empty tube. I don't know if you can see that very well. And all it is, is it's gonna contain that air pressure within. Uh, underneath here, inside this tube, is going to be your damper. And so you saw kind of what a basic damper looks like in the fork. Uh, the one in here might be slightly more complicated. Uh, and there's a couple other features on here that I'm gonna talk about. So just like the other one, there's a bunch of oil sitting in here. Uh, now this one has also a little pocket of nitrogen here and I'm not gonna go too much into that. It's not super important. Uh, just understand that the damper is still you basically changing the size of the openings that the oil can go through. So in this particular shock, it's going to have the piggyback reservoir. And so inside this tube that slides in and out, and I'll show you quickly. So this is going to slide in and out here like that. And some of the oil is going to travel up into here, up through this frame and into the piggyback reservoir. In the piggyback reservoir, you're going to basically have another dampening. Um, so this actually, the valve for the compression dampening is going to be right here, and the rebound dampening valving system is going to be down in there. And actually there's some compression dampening happening there, uh, but not too much. So the reason you might want a piggyback reservoir is if you're doing a lot more downhill riding, and you're really aggressively using that. And so you've got a lot of friction going on there, a lot of movement of the oil going back and forth through the damper, which is gonna cause the oil to heat up. And as the oil heats up, obviously it's gonna be a little less viscous um, and you're gonna start losing the same feel that you would have on cold oil. I will show you a quick diagram I was able to find online of what the inside looks like of this, um, or up shock's very similar to this and it's gonna be right up here. So you can go ahead and take a look at that, um, the link for that picture is also gonna be in the video description. So you can go ahead and take a look at that picture more closely if that's something that's interesting to you. So that's the inside of that guy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this brief video. I'll sort of let it close with a little more footage of me riding um, my bike with, uh, with the shock view and everything because I know that's kind of interesting to some people. So uh, have a nice day. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If you'd like me to show you a little bit more about uh, the different bike mechanics, I could do that. I'm far from an expert, but I love tinkering and I love learning new things. So uh, just let me know in the comments. Have a good one. Bye.